I always get nervous when he says he's going to sneak around behind me. Brad Gallagher, eh? The vile grammar trapper. Can you tell me what it's like to live with that fuck? Oh, she's off the boat. We'll tip all that in. He gave a mighty roar. I rode all through the territory and never come unstuck. So give me all you got, big bird, and buck, you bastard buck. He's got the fire pit going in the backyard. So you got a herb named after yourself? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is. That, uh, that's unbelievable, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, righto. Well, can you come up here? We're about to cook a bit of roux. Okay. I need a hand. Right. Of course you do. Yeah. Not a bloody So what we've got here is some nice, uh, nice tender. You don't want to cut that up for me, Murray? <laughs> well, can you just slice yeah. it up a little bit? You're right. A little bit more. That way. Or that that way? way? Yeah, no, yeah, that for way? sure. Yeah, well, no, it's too easy, mate. Is it sharp not Ah! Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, what have we got? Ruin the stew. Ruin the stew. So this is a um, a pretty basic recipe, easy to do, and in quick time when you're on the riverbank or out at Lake Keeper where we're at today. It was this time last year. It was empty, naught percent. We've got forty-four percent here today, and we're hoping to get a yellow belly later on to uh, show us how to cook one of those. Yellow belly being a fish. That's a fish, Murray. Yeah, cool. Nice little tender morsels there. So you're chopping up the carrot? I've got a little bit of carrot here, a little bit of onion. Just the base, basics to start with. I'm doing the best I can, which isn't that good. Have you seasoned that yet, Murray? No, I haven't finished chopping it up yet. I'm just going to sneak around behind you, mate, and put a bit of carrot ready to go. I always get nervous when he says he's going to sneak around behind me. Nah, not at all. That's alright, gonna big chunk in this one. Okay. So these just need a light scrape, we don't want to get rid of all of it. So what's the nature of it? The actual dish, so it's a it's a Well it's the roux in the stew, so yeah. roux, roux meat. Like, yeah. I know we're cooking a national icon, but yeah. tastes bloody good Murray. Did you catch the roux yourself, Peter? I did actually. <laughs> what was that? I ran it down. Was that on a worm or a shrimp? <laughs> that was on a shrimp. <laughs> Hurry, you told you he's a larrikin on the loose. Oh. Righto. Let's throw them in, Muzz. I haven't finished doing them yet. Well, come on, mate. I need to run the chainsaw. No, 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 it's tender as. I'm getting there. Got the little, surlo, little portable surlo bin on the side here for all the rubbish, Murray. And this is a brand new table, too, Loz, isn't it? Brand, brand new. It's got its own little storage area and pantry, or you can keep a rabbit in there if you want to. Keep yourself company. You've had a look under it already, have you? Yeah, looks good. Watch your fingers. I am. Ah! So we've got a couple of onions going in there. A couple of brown onions. Brown. Right, I put the roux in the stew, Murray. The roux in the stew, this is what it's all about, folks. Look, watch this how I do this. Uh, look at that. Basically one and a half movements. Right, eh? can you flick that little... We're just going to start it. We've got the coals, we've got the fire burner behind here. We're just going to start it on the burner, just to brown it up and season it. Is that on, mate? Having trouble? You got any gas in it? No, you've actually got to turn it on, Murray. Yeah, right. Eh? See this? This bit here. Yeah. That's got to go off, that's got to go on. Yeah, right. Eh? That's gold, Murray. I knew that, mate. You're I'm the just... only one I know, you know that doesn't know how to work one of those. I've got one, mate, but you know You've I You've just... got one. I want to make you look more important. Right, okay. I know nothing. Right, so we're gonna we're gonna st you're gonna stir that up and season with <laughs> salt and pepper. Yeah. You couldn't get a bigger spoon, mate. Here we go, bit I'll, of the old. I'll take that everywhere I go. What's your preferred amount, mate? Because I'll I'll go this pretty quickly. That's nice, Murray. That's it? Yep. Cool. Salt. A little, little bit of salt. A little bit of Harold. 100,000 years old, this stuff. 
rocks up. Yeah, and it says use by August. So the secret with roux yeah. is we've got to we're gonna just salt. season it first, that's enough salt. We're gonna season it first, brown it off. Yeah. Then we're gonna add these little master ingredients here. Yeah. And then cook it for about three hours, as slow as we can get it. Righto. And slow you, and slow. And you've got some mushrooms? Got mushrooms going in, they'll go in a little bit later. We've got a bit of garlic mince. Give it a stir. A bit of a stir around. We've got um, we've got our mascot here. People might be interested in the mascot. Yes, that's the uh, the Muslim Laws brew. That's it, all we can call it today. He's, he's having a he's having a chug on it. That's all we can call it. Right, so we're just trying to get a bit of colour in here. Seal it all off. So it, uh, It smells sensational. I know you can't. We got That's the lid off the garlic. Garlic game. You can, cut, you can cut your raw garlic and that up, but it takes forever. So and, uh, just just a couple of dollops. A couple of dollops, maybe yeah. a bit more. Oh, another dollop. Half a dollop. So two and a half dollops of garlic. Starting to get a bit of colour in there now. Oh, maybe we'll have a crack at it right now. A little, a little rare, a little rare at the moment, most. Yeah. Right, up. So what we're going to do here? These are the little secret ingredients here. When you don't want to be mucking around with all the sauces from scratch. Little, little casserole dish bases. You ever find that people make things a bit too complicated, Loz, or what? Not this dish is not. Complicated. No, no, no. But what some, some people do because they want to they have exact measurements and all that sort of stuff, and you just. Yeah. Well, we're just going to eat that straight in there. And what? That's the casserole. It's just a casserole, a red wine base. Red, yeah, right, cool. red wine casserole base. Oh yeah, right on. Get that in working, it's magic. So in this size camp, we're gonna go two little bases. So what size is this particular? It's a six. It's a six, six quarters, that? That's it. Yeah, right on. I think you've got one, it's a two, isn't it? <laughs> That's what I, uh, yeah, do my coffee. No, I've got a four and a half and I might have a nine. Have you? But the nine, yeah. Let's tidy that one up. Okay, that's all. Right, so what we're going to do now, we we'll just brown it off. We, that takes two cups of water. Is that two cups? Oh, precisely. Whoa! Jesus, you nearly went over there. Um, no, it's a precise measurement. Uh, he's a freak, this bloke. That's looking good, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Exactly two cups? Exactly two cups. Right, -o. this is about time before they go in the coals. Let's just throw in a heap of little spuds. Right, -o. don't end up chopping up, just let it throw right, them in. Straight in. Everyone gets a spud. Okay, so there's, there's six of them. Just cover them Seven. around. I'm just, I'm just going to try and get them equidistant from each other. It's not important, but it just looks. That's beautiful. Give it another good stir, stir mus. Looks more symmetrical. So you've got some nice white cup. You're rocking the bear, brother. You're I rocking know. the bear. Well, well it's, it's a stability factor with the table here, I think, man. I don't know how you set it up, but it's a bit wobbly. Um, we need another onion. I reckon so. And you've got some, yeah, these white cut mushrooms, they're coming in they're at some coming stage. In. We'll just chuck them in. We'll chuck them in there. Chuck everything in. Beautiful. Then we're going to slow cook this on the coals. Yeah. For about three hours. Three hours. So the roux goes tender. Gotcha. A tender roux. Yeah. Undercooked, chewy. Whoops, there's a spillage. It happens. We'll work that out, Murray. Don't you worry about that, mate. Right about that. Give it a real good stir around the base, around the bottom. Get in deep, Murray. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going down, buddy. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Water wise, looks like we might have been short a little bit. Oh, there's a huge amount of evaporation early, so I think we're all right. Um, yeah, okay. That's looking, That's, looking good. That's looking good. Got a bit of colour in it. Got the orange, the carrots, we've got the, we've got the spuds, we've got the roux, we've got the onion. Uh, a bit of mushrooms got to go in. We've got a bit of uh, salt, a bit of pepper, a bit of garlic. Yep. Is there any other magic ingredients? Mushrooms. Mushrooms. That's it. We're going to go the whole hog. Go the whole hog. The whole punnet. A whole pile of they mushrooms. Keep them whole because the longer it's going to cook that long, they're just going to shrivel up. Mark. Yeah, and it just absorbs all that wonderful goulashy. You happy with that? Oh, mate, I'm bloody stoked. Right, 
Hang on, what's that stuff there? Is that that's, that's gravy. That's gravy. We don't need gravy yet, mate. Okay, right. So I don't we'll sneak the lid on that, so we've got just heat it for a little minute. We'll go and get some coals, eh? Why not? Go and get some coals. We're gonna go to coals. Coals over. Oh, there, mate. Geez, sorry, mate. Yeah. Coals. Well, I get confused, but Peter, you know that. Um, so there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Lorimer. Ruin the stew. It's gonna be sensational. Right, we're here at Cooper Dam, and uh, you know, which is not too far from the great Gunnedah, the birthplace of the wonderful Peter Laws Lorimer, uh, where his son Jack still resides. And um, anyway, uh, so Pete and Trace live in Newcastle, as does uh, Mole, uh, their daughter. And um, anyway, so this has just got. When we turned up here yesterday, it was blowing about. Uh, there was about 30 knot. You nearly could have surfed out the back here. And in Newcastle every year, Mark Richards, the great Mark Richards puts on a thing called Surf Fest. And uh, it's like an unofficial leg of the world tour. And um, anyway, so go back a, a lot of years and they asked me to write a, a, a tribute poem to Mark and then perform at a black tie dinner on the Saturday night in the middle of Surf Fest. And uh, they wanted me to do two 10 minute spots. Got there, did the tribute, then said, uh, then after things went over, they said, no, it's two five minute spots. And then it got back to one five minute spot at half past 10 after Johnny Diesel, which is every poet's dream to come on at half past ten at night after a rock act in front of 200 drunk surfers. Uh, so I did this piece called Rinder Cellar, not mine, Archie Campbell's, it's Cinderella back to front. I don't think they even knew. Uh, and then they had a thing that I celebrated the, the performance when they had a few. They had a thing the next day called the Expression Session, most radical move on the on the wave, you know. I thought I was a big chance of winning it, but I, I slept in. So this is the true story as it happened in my head. It must have been a big mistake or else a bloody lark. A surf contest was on, I'd somehow got to start. You know, they're giving me a wild card. Well, my, my mates all bloody raw. They knew I could barely swim when I'd rarely touched a board. See, I come from up Moree in the middle of the scrub and the only surfing that I'd seen was on the telly in the pub. And on the Guaida River, the biggest wave we ever got was the flow from Copeton Dam used to feed the cotton crop. But with a belly full of booze, my mates egged me on. I said, yeah, okay, I'll do it. You've seen me, now I'm gone. See, all the dead set legends were heading off to Newey, so I dusted off my surf mat and I grabbed me Okanui's. With Bundy, Swag and Pig Dog, the three things I admire most, I jumped into my four wheel drive and headed for the coast. Seven hours later, I was walking through the sand of the registration tent. I said, I'm oh, Muzzer, what's the plan? This official Warren Smith said, hey mate, where's your board? And I said, well, you know, I've only got a surf mat, that's all I could afford. Well, he tried to bloody bar me, but my pig dog bristled up and he quickly reconsidered and said, well, I suppose that's good enough. But it was getting close to showtime. I was in the second heat. I began to flame and sweat and I had tingles in my feet. This shifty bloke beside me asked, hey, man, are you from out of town? When I nodded, he gave me this pill and said, this will calm you down. Well, before I bloody knew it, the sky turned red and green. I saw Marlins riding motorbikes while sharks played tambourines. The heats became a blur, but I must have done all right because I made the semi-finals. I had to stay the night. Next day in the Herald, there were photographs of me doing backflips inside tubes with me boardies round me knees. Now my opponents in the semis are five-star bloody stars at Okalupo bloke, Lane Beachley and MR. I don't really know what happened. It was like I wasn't there, some out-of-body caper. But I didn't bloody care. I beat Nocky and Mark Richards. It was like a flaming dream. I'd also knocked off Beachley. Well, you, you know what I mean. <laughs> now, I've got lots of time for Lane. You know I really rate her. But when final time arrived, it was down to me and Slater. Yeah, the pretty boy from Baywatch looked the goods, no ifs or buts. And me, the buffhead from the bush, little talent, lots of guts. I might have only had a surf mat, but I was in this thing to win, so I had me pig dog riding shotgun to stop Slater dropping in. Plus I have fiberglass at the bottom and I put on a Lex and Keel. It might have looked like toilet, but it handled just unreal. Well, Slater got an awesome start. His first wave was a cracker. I saw it from the beach as I finished off my Maccas. I quickly did a durry, took two or three long drags and said, hey dog, we've a durry, this bastard's not too bad. Well, my first three waves were solid, but it was time to stop the rot. I, I needed something special. I thought I'd give them all I got. The clock said now or never. A 15 footer raised its head. I whispered to me hand, if we don't know this, we're dead. Well, we took off down the face and got a fairly decent tube. And when we saw the sun again, it was time to hit the groove. Well, I pulled a sloppy dripper, then a buck, you bastard buck. 
and inside out rip snorter with a double twisting tuck. The crowd was going off because I was filthy, sick, demented. I gave them all the classic moves, Jack, plus the ones I just invented, but I still had some in the tank. I said, dig this funky jive. I did a headstand up the back while my dog was hanging five. And with a floating drop knee cut back with my pig dog on my lap, even Slater sat up on his board and shook his head and clapped. I scored the perfect 10, took the trophy and the cash, announced that I'd retired and I was back home in a flash, you know, where Bear and Cliffy Orton shout me Bundy all day long. See, they backed me in at thousands and they had a thousand on. But you know, I, I really miss me pig dog because I don't hear from him that much bar a paw print on the postcard, which is how he stays in touch. The bastard won't come home, but you know, that's okay by me. He's on the circuit now and he's living in Hawaii. And Kelly Slater calls me every week, I suppose you'd say we're mates. He rings, rings me for advice. So I reckon it's bloody great. You know, I watch him on the telly and it gives me quite a buzz when he pulls a slop your dripper and says, hey man, I learnt this shit from Muzz. There we go. The wave of disbelief, folks. Larry! Yay! Huge crowd. And then, I haven't really had a good bit. I think I've got it right. Sky rockets in flight. Afternoon delight. Ah, afternoon delight. Thank you very much. It's been a wonderful audience.